Hello and welcome to another episode of the Plus Six Three HP Reviews Show. I am one of your hosts, John Clemente. Alongside with me are a couple of my bestest best friends, my family of choice, my brothers. I'm going to start with the man directly above me, the man who has pink headsets, the person that wants us to call him stuff that we will not call him on is Chubax. Hello, I'm Chubax and you can call me Papa. Papa, can you hear me? You can, but we won't. Uh, the next person I'm introducing is the handsome man on my uh, immediate top left. Right. Yeah? Top right. Our... Oh, top left, yes. I'm top left. Uh, he is the man with the plan, the, our face of the group, uh, RJ, a.k.a. Raymond. Hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Looking forward to share with you um, what we think about our homework. Yes. And rounding up our quartet for this week, again, we're always blessed to have a fourth chair because he is on the West Coast. I am on the East Coast and we are we are finding a way to record at a time where all of us are awake and it is very early in his time zone. So thank you very much. Another Papa himself, Arnie. Hello there. If this is the first time that you've gone to our channel, thank you very much for your view. We hope that you like the content. Uh, the Plus Six Three HB Nexus of shows is just everything about fandom. On Tuesdays, we have this show where we review, select shows and movies, go deep into them and provide our opinions on when, how, and who you should watch it with. On Wednesdays, we drop the recording of our very, very first D&D &D campaign. We are middle-aged men, never played D&D &D in our lives. Started last year, and it's still going. All of those recordings are dropping every Wednesday or most Wednesdays so that you can follow us along with and our adventure. And on Thursdays, we curate a selection of clips, featurettes, trailers, uh, short videos, and where we act to them live so you can see the things that we are hyped about. All of that is just fun content that you have uh, at your disposal. Hopefully you enjoy, you enjoy with us, and you share it with your friends and family. So please type into your browser, youtube.com slash plus 63HP. Our channel will pop up. Hit that like. Comment on the videos, hit that notification button so you know when our videos are dropping. And most importantly, subscribe to our channel. It really helps us grow this community of like-minded individuals who just want to share fun content to their friends and family. You can also interact with us at any point. Uh, we are on all the socials. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our handle is at plus six three HP. If you want to keep us in the background, you want to pretend at work that you're not uh, that you're working and you don't want to put a video on YouTube and your screen. Uh, head on to your favorite podcasting application of choice. Uh, we are there. Uh, search plus six three HP. We will pop up. All of our shows will be there. We particularly like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon. That's it for housekeeping. We're very very excited to go through our shows. Uh, this week, the ones that we've watched, we are still continuing our review week on week, episode by episode of Moon Knight. We are also reviewing Halo coming out on Paramount Plus week on week as well. And uh, for this week, we have a, our main movie, our main block, our, 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 our main assignment is uh, one of the movies where my ex-girlfriend is uh, acting in, a uh, gal which is uh, uh, Death on the Nile. So is those are the three things in? that I we are- I keep forgetting. On. Oh yeah, I forget. it's, it's fine. We were very low key. Uh, we wanted to keep it simple, casual as they say. So um, join us along in our discussion. So without further ado, uh, we are going to start with our A block. I'm going to start with uh, episode three of Halo entitled Emergence, dropped in Paramount Plus this week. Before we go into the synopsis and kind of like deep dive on the particular episodes and rate it, mm. quickly around the table, let's see uh, how you guys uh, are, are felt about the episode, how you're feeling about the series. Let's start with the person immediately to my left. So, Trebox. Yeah, I'm getting frustrated with this with the series. They, it's just... It's really not Halo, you know. There's no, 
I mean, I, I like I said last week, that episode would have been good if because if they were setting up and then they give us a payoff of action this week, and we still got none. So yeah, and so I I'm get I have some issues with some of the stuff that they're doing, which I'll go, get into with once we start with the synopsis. But yeah, mm-hmm. getting frustrated. Are you? Um, it's the weakest of the three episodes. Um, it's basically holding on by a thin thread for me. Uh, it's basically um, a regular sci-fi show with a halo skin, kind of like Fortnite. So, sure. Raymond. Well, I took your advice last week, and I am watching it with fresh eyes. I don't think that it's Halo. I'm not thinking it's anything related to the video game. So I'm starting to enjoy it. So uh, well, well, others are kind of... Well, I should, I should have done that. Down. I'll try. I'm it's kind of hard. like going up. Because I was like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I should give it a try and just not think that it's Halo. Take it for, for what it is. It's, it's a sci-fi, um, super soldier-ish uh, series. And okay, some some flaws here and there, but it overall it's pretty good. Um, I'm enjoying the story now, especially with what's been happening in this episode. Mm-hmm. You should take that. The advice. plot thickens. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm the same thing with RJ. I actually enjoyed episode three a lot more than episode two, hmm. only because they slowed down, and only because it's the least Halo among the three episodes. Uh, he he never wore uh, he yeah he didn't wear his armor. Uh, I he think up until the, towards the end, the end yeah. at the end when they were going to the place. Uh, so um, when it was slower, they were kind of developing how what you know clarified how flash cloning was illegal and why they needed it at this point and what was the basis of everything and getting more deep into the story. Then I kind of like all right, there you go. Sci- Sorry, sirens are at my end. Like, are you getting sirens? arrested, John? Uh, I told him to come back later. So uh, it's from my uh, mental hospital. Um, but mm. the idea is like, I, the same thing. It's like, all right, it's sci fi now. And then I forgot that it was Halo. It was decent. It wasn't, you know, bonkers, but I thought it was a little bit better than episode two because of the decisions that they made in terms of it's the least action and most talky. From what I figured, so I figured like, all right, cool. With that, uh, I'll turn it over again to uh, Trubox to give us a synopsis, and then we can butt into what happened in the episode. Then Trubox, take it away. But in, but in. So okay. episode three, Halo, uh, titled Emergence, released on April 7, twenty twenty-two. So we start with the flashback, which I didn't know was a flashback. Maybe did I miss a sign? Did it say flashback? Like, yeah. Did it say so they learned from the pirates, man. They learn from no, pirates. No, no. <laughs> no, right? So I thought this was just like some poor con- uh, uh, part of the UNSC, but uh, we see people being uh, basically like slaves, right? Being pushed to like sort through trash or something for import uh, useful stuff. And we see uh, two kids talking, like uh, reading a book and kissing for a very young age. <laughs> but. Uh, they're yeah they so they were reading from a book trying to like i guess give a better life for themselves but uh they're discovered by soldiers who are really mean and they chase them for their i guess they weren't working or something and they kill the other kid and then the girl tries to escape and is being beaten when covenant arrives and they were searching for something with a rod and they found the girl, and this is when we discovered that it. Oh well, then it, when they re- started running, the boy called her Maki. So then, then that's when it clicked that oh, this is a flashback. This is Maki. Maki. And then, uh, so they find her, and she's the one that they were looking for for unknown reason. I don't know what the rod is or anything, but that's um, it. <laughs> yeah, she goes with them. Uh, I mean, it was done pretty well. I mean, if you were in his her position, you know. Living in trash, being beaten, and your friend killed, and then somebody comes in and takes you, and they're not being hostile, you know, you'd probably go. So, 
Uh, I, I kind of like that. Sorry. Yeah, go. To put it in context, they were also reading about different a different world from yeah. the book. So her friend who knew how to read was was um, making her imagine what what that other world would look like. And, and of course, of, you're you like, know, yeah, that's like, you got a kiss. That's a nice style, though. Maybe that's what like, oh yeah. If the book says kiss anywhere, you have to be kissed. I will use that tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But wait, I thought you're gonna see a guy from. Oh, never mind. Uh, later. <laughs> <That's> later. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, um, so this is just with the help of uh, uh, Wiki, because the, the time, the things is gonna be jumping from setting to setting. So we'll stick with Maki for now. Maki, uh, lead. Wait. Um, so we'll stick with Maki. We'll finish her storyline so that we can go mm-hmm. one by one. With Maki, so she dresses up and talks to Mercy, and then she said that uh, not only will she find the artifact, she's gonna bring the demon's head, speaking to Master Chief. Mm-hmm. So her plan is to there. There's a UNSC Corvette uh, named the uh, Gladius, I think, right? Mm-hmm. And as they're flying, just so happenstance, another ship. I um leave slip space just beside it, and then, uh, no life signs, no fight, no weapons, no anything, and uh, <laughs> so they co- somebody contacts them through the civilian line, and it's Maki, and but they of course they don't know that, but it's Maki pretending to be you know somebody. It's uh, a trap. A prisoner, and she said that oh everybody left because something ha- happened to the ship, and then I need help. Richard Hurst, baby. Yeah, so they get her, so they send her a, a pod, and as she, as they get her, she uses these. I thought from the trailer it was gonna be the flood. But I guess it's not. Yeah, it's like this these big earthworms that are more symbiotic in nature, and apparently under her command because. Er- she was looking and they would do what she wants, even without she, her speaking, just by, by looks. They captured the, the Corvette and then they forgot, or maybe she didn't know that uh, in Halo, uh, each ship has a. I forgot the name of the. But it's a protocol. They, I forgot the name of the protocol, but they have a protocol where when, some, when you're compromised, the ship is compromised, you erase all data, especially navigation data, data because it will lead to Earth. So that's in the game. Right. So here they did the same yeah. thing, which is good that they were able to do that, even though they, you know they were being killed. So Maki finds uh, wasn't able to get any information, which I kind of like. You know, I w- I would have thought if this was you know run- your run of the mill show where they capture a soldier and then torture her him like how he- she did, she get information, but she didn't. So she failed that, and. Her realization is that the only place to go is uh, back to where they found the first artifact. So they, she's gonna go with back to Madrigal. So that's the end of her story. Pretty cute though, Maki. Yeah, I, I mean, I really dig the the boycott. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the bleach blood boycott look. So here we go on the rubble. I don't know why we're watching Quan. So Quan convinced uh, tries to. Keeps wanting to go back to Madrigal to fight, and she has an argument with uh, Soren, with Soren's wife, and that she wants to be free to to fight for her father. Th- this is where it's kind of lost on me. Like, why why does this matter? Her, I mean, I know it's gonna matter if they're gonna connect it, but it's like her motivation is like fight who the UNSC for the freedom of Madrigal when. No, and, fight the the venture. The venture, yes. yeah. Yeah, venture. Because, and then but, for the freedom of Madrigal, also against the UNSC because venture made a treaty with the UNSC. Yeah. Yes. So, it, in spite of knowing about the aliens. Yeah, that's she, where I'm. Yeah. I'm a little lost because maybe it's the setting. I, I'm still con- like confusing it with not confusing it, but like overlapping. I'm thinking it it's Halo just because game. of her dad. I don't think she cares. Definitely yeah. about the dad, yeah. yeah I, but I, also, I, like, I understand that. But if because in the in the again back to the game, it's like, I guess maybe here there's it's still like a fifty fifty war. But because in Halo, they're all like, 
we're really getting ano, fucked here in, in the Halo. Like, they're really underdogs against the Covenant. Any planet that the Covenant comes, they just conquer and they glass. And everybody's scared. Everybody's kind of unified because they're all dying. And here, it's like, you know, it's still, I guess maybe 50-50, like, they, uh, they've appeared. But it just, it's so weird to me that, you know, like, in that world, in the flashback where Maki was, like, the aliens just came in. They didn't even kill anybody. And they just, mm. they just came in and picked her up. So it's like, so uncovenant like from the game. So, th- so that's why I guess my wires are getting confused. But okay, I, I guess I can live with that, that she wants to continue her father's wishes. And then uh, Soren doesn't want her to go, of course, but then bribes him very, very fast. With <laughs> their money or whatever. So she, he, with he no collateral, up, by the way. No I know, collateral. No, Basically, no, no, no. she's the collateral. Basically, if she doesn't pay him. Oh, that's yeah. true. So yeah, he, I guess that was smart for that. That, that will work for him. And yeah. then, uh, so she's going to Magical with her. And then, so we go back to Reach, so their home base. And our Admiral Paragonsky orders Miranda Keys to study the artifact behind Halsey's back. He even gives her like a, a blueprint or, you know, data, computer data. And Halsey completes this really fucked up uh, um, procedure of creating Cortana. So yep. what she what she did was I like she, this. I really like this. Really, she, she cloned yeah. herself, mm. and then used that mind to create an AI. Exactly. Her, her yeah. So at first I was like against it, but now listening to you guys were like, it is it, it, it is pretty cool. Like, uh. It's kind of like cheating how to create AI. It's like you're using a human mind, but then you're making mm-hmm. it, you're transferring it to, you know what I mean? Digital instead of just go digitally building it from the ground up. So here she's like, she, <clears throat> she used the neural pathways and stuff of the Flash clone to create Cortana. So yeah, I think that, that's, that's pretty cool. So I, so go, go, pause go. there. That's why I, something that I really like is in sci-fi, you want to build the world. And you know, they've dropped a, a few things on why cloning is illegal. Why is this and that? Why AI doesn't happen? So I love the idea that, okay, you paid it off. You need a brain to mush. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm not going to use my fucking brain. So I'm going to clone myself, use my fucking brain. And then I, li- I do like the idea when Cortana was cloned, or at least the, the body was cloned. Mm-hmm. The body had a lot of questions. And memories uh, and- as well. So it's a good way to talk about the past historically in an active way, in a unique way. So this part is like, all right, there you go. There's fucking sci-fi. Okay. There you go. Really? And I do like the idea of the, the, the de-aging of, of that particular person. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll talk about Cortana's yeah. design later. But Jay, you were, uh, had something. Yeah, I like how, uh, as Chubax mentioned, or was it Arnie, the memories were intact. Mm-hmm. That she even had pressing memories like, you know, what changed? Because when you were me, when I, I mean, when you were me at, at that age, you were against this and, and what happened mm-hmm. to the children. You know, she, she had the concerns when she was younger. Yeah. And it kind of shows that as you mature, you know, ethics kind of is one of the books that you throw out the window. Yeah. yeah. You guys convinced me because I thought it was quite wasteful just to just blender a brain and then just discard the body right but i guess it convinced me that's fine the only thing that i didn't like because the uh, assistant surgeon or assistant scientist creepy yeah we didn't need that it's a it's a I, common yeah. throw i actually like because it gave him it made him real like because yeah. if, if, if he didn't do that he'd just be the typical that's you know true. number one like somebody's assistant that doesn't matter but here yeah. maybe it can go somewhere like maybe he has a crush on halsey on the first well, on, or like he has he has feelings for her, so when, yeah, as a child with the clone, could be, could be. But the thing is, I, I would have been more understanding if it was set up that he had some uh, unrequited uh, feelings true, for true. the actual Doctor <laughs> Halsey. Maybe, but, uh, maybe not. He's but, just but, a fucking but, perv. But now, because they there's exist. this. <laughs> Yeah, because there's this defense, uh, defenseless clone that knows nothing that she's just gonna take advantage. So it's kind of like, mm. 
but it's okay. I mean, and then they melt her in acid, and okay, again, uh, very wasteful. Though. Yeah, I don't some, think some... I don't think she mind the kiss if she was gonna be <laughs> she was gonna get melted and burnt. Yeah, and the thing is, he didn't even commit to it. So, like for me, you're going to give that weird aspect of the character. You might as well commit to it instead of like, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah, let's see if they do though. Maybe, I maybe I agree with that. RJ there because uh, Arnie there where it's like. If you're gonna make somebody creepy, at least let him have a little bit. Yeah, like I mean, he was almost there. <laughs> he got almost caught. That's weird. Yeah, I mean, at least the, like the, the the kids, right? At least the kid got a kiss before he got killed, <laughs> or you know, something like that. Because even though it's fucked up how he got the uh, the kiss from the the girl, right? So, but but dude, the kid got a kiss from a living girl. This one's. Almost a cadaver. Yeah, true, true, true. But again, it's all about uh, you know consent and all that stuff. So like the the living girl, but yeah, but it's a child, and you kind of like hmm. you know. But they're both tr- children. Yeah, but you know he was a bit like puppy love. Yeah, there's some manipulation there. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> At that age, I don't think manipulation was on the top oh, of his mind. <laughs> well, he probably didn't think about it, but you know. Yeah, but anyways, uh, moving on, moving on. Yeah, so so anyways, just uh, just for info as well. So in in this series, this is the first true AI that they made Cortana. In mm-hmm. in the game and in the lore, AI is like uh, normal for them. Like mm-hmm. most ships have a like an AI, but most AIs in the Halo world is like they have a lifespan. I think five to seven years, and then they start degrading. So they always destroy them after a certain, certain date or, or a certain time. So here it's, and Cortana was usually implanted in the in with a suit, like connected to his mind. So in yeah. this in in the in the series, she's directly in his mind, like controlling mm-hmm. her. So yeah. anyways, um, so they implant her uh, implant uh, Cortana into John. And I, I'm so thankful that they did get the original voice for Cartana. Oh, uh, it is the original voice. Okay, good, mm-hmm. good, good. And uh, following, and here we go. Anybody here want to talk like the scene with Cartana and John and how they're interacting and stuff? Yeah, you want to butt in? Yeah, anybody <laughs> like... I, I So I just want to figure out. Cause I'm okay with the very... Xbox 360 design of Cortana. How about you guys? Like the design itself. Oh, the design, okay. I don't mind. Yeah, it looks, yeah. Weird. It looks okay. Good. Like some people, I I saw some okay. tweets on how like Cortana is super weird, but I, you know, I it's the Uncanny but, Valley, right? But it's she's supposed to be like that, Uncanny Valley. Like she's not supposed to be real, real, but you know. Well, did they ex- they want her to be more realistic or something? What? No, it's like it's it's they were they were expecting yeah better CG, I guess. Well, oh, it was fine. They couldn't I mean, do the fine for me. They couldn't do the elites properly. I mean, what did you expect? <laughs> and uh, I mean, logically in my mind, like anything she does would use brain power, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't yeah. want to waste. You know, like your screensavers, you, you, you wouldn't want to waste uh, RAM. RAM or processing cycles on something that doesn't matter, like how she looks. So it's well, fine. Um, for I mean, some people, that matters. I know. <laughs> Another perbs. Uh, but uh, yeah, Chief was initially, uh, well, he was really reluctant to have her. And then, mm-hmm. um, but in the end, she try, she does prove useful. It's like having, you know, your, it is having your own AI. So um, she helps him. Uh, yeah, there's just a scene. Fun. Oh, go. Yeah. No, no. The, uh, I think when there, he's like, "Oh, how many planets are blah blah blah?" They're like, yeah. "Oh, the, 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 there are 21 planets. Would you like me to show them?" Like, "Oh, that is literally Siri." <laughs> <laughs> In my brain. <laughs> I mean, there is Cortana on Windows. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not so bad. Uh, and then we uh, have just, the, yeah, yeah. We have the scene where Master Chief returns to the barracks and meets Silver Team, and then. Uh, they say how how they trust him, and then after that, when he takes off, he tries to remove the emotional pellet, and of course Halsey's always watching, 
Cortana helps him because she, she Halsey ordered her to become like a, an accomplice. So that's another cool twist, Chewbox. Like I love the idea that you know any other any other sci-fi basic sci-fi it'll be like oh you you know, Cortana will stop um, Master Chief, but I love the fact that oh you know, make him your you know let him think that you're an accomplice. It's like oh that's a cute twist. I, I understand that because I guess that's one of my issues because for me. In the books, I mean, Halsey has a lot of ethical issues, of course, like kidnapping the children, raising them to become Spartans, and you know stuff like that. But she always ha- treated them special, you know, like like her babies. And here it's just like she's just using Master Chief. So I, I don't know how I feel. That kind of uh, gave me made a negative feeling for me. So I'm not sure how I feel about it. So it's like. I didn't like the the cloak and dagger stuff with Master Chief, mm-hmm. like with John, and using Cortana. You know, I think I'm gonna like where it's heading, where Cortana's gonna side with Chief eventually, against mm-hmm. Halsey even. But like in in the lore, it's always Halsey does everything to protect the Spartans, especially especially John. You know, and I'm also not sure how I feel where. So, anyways, let's go forward. So. Using Cortana, I do like the twist where so using Cortana, chief the chief touches the artifact, so they stu- they they put it in like a probably a, like a Faraday cage to control it, mm-hmm. you know, so it doesn't uh, spark out, and then John touches it using Cortana, and they try to do it with Cortana controlling John's body, and it doesn't work. It has to be John awake, John, not just yeah. his body, yeah. you know, not just the yeah. DNA. So I, I I did like that. That was cool. But yeah. um yeah. yeah, again I just didn't like that they 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 can turn off Chief, you know. Like they're going behind his back. He didn't notice that Cortana was able to shut him off. Uh-huh. And then put uh, him in stasis. Yeah. And then so he, he sees more memories and then realizes that he's seen this artifact before or maybe the other one and that there's another one that connects to this one in his past and it's probably in the, in the planet, one of the planets that he's uh, that where he grew up with. Uh-huh. So that's when oh that was before sorry that was before the pellet and the stuff. But he realized that uh, it's probably from his childhood. These things that they're seeing are vi- not visions but memories. So he takes off the the pellet because he thinks that having memories or having feelings will help with the images, you know, or maybe getting more visions. Uh-huh. So he takes off the pellet with Cortana's help, as you said, and Halsey pushes Cortana to help him, even though that's against the rules, to make him, to make John like Cortana more and use him. So he yeah. takes off the pellet, and then one of the Spartans sees it, you know, suspe- is suspicious of Master Chief. So I, I didn't yeah. like this. Like, that's the thing, you know, we reverted yeah. back to basic uh, um, Lorna. It's like, I I don't want the Team Silver to be... I know. I don't so, want a rift. That's that's my issue. There's there's too much cloak and dagger stuff, especially with, with the Silver team. Like, the Spartans, they, they should be like Master Chief is the... is our goal, you know, that that he's mm-hmm. the man, he he's our leader. Whatever mm-hmm. he's doing, whether it's us or not, it's Master Chief. That That's the one that one what I want to get to. So I guess maybe they're building up to it. So anyways, uh, so you, without the pellet, he has this scene where he goes out, experiences stuff for the first time. And then he sees a music and do- and a dog. That's when flicks his memory. And he knows where this planet was or what, what he, so he goes to the, the artifact again and sees more and then realizes where it was. What, what, more de- she sees more visions like more details so to narrow down the search and then he finds that it's uh what's the name er, uh Mamore is it right Mamore yeah. Yeah. Mamore so that's this planet where he was before Mamore oh, he suits, how he many planets up. have an ice ring yeah so he suits Three. up he wears an Two. armor not the mask though and then he hates that mask <laughs> he talks to Halsey and Halsey was like playing coy here, right? Playing hard to get. Yeah. Like, oh. but she yeah, because she, she, she she pretended everything. that she didn't yeah. she didn't know what's happening. But that's what I didn't like. It's like looking dark stuff with her. So, uh, oh no, Arid. Wait, does it say home planet of Eridanus second? 
Anyway, well, it was, it's his home planet, planet yeah. whether it's more or than. Anyway, um, so he thinks that the second artifact might be there. So John, uh, along with Halsey, they travel to Eridanus to investigate, and that's where we left off the episode. So, Good synopsis. Yeah. Let's do uh, okay. Having discussed, let's do our final thoughts about um, um, episode three of Halo, where it's going, and your rating. So we'll start with. Let's go on the other side of the rotation. Jay, what do you think about the episode? How would you rate it? I actually liked it better because now pieces are falling into place. I am watching it with a different set of lens. So it's not with a judgment that it's not the video game. Yeah, it's not. So I'm taking it as what it is. It's a uh, sci-fi super soldier movie. So far, not bad. It's not perfect, but I'd give it better a better rating than last time i think last time i was giving it six but now it's bumping up to seven oh, awesome arnie well i'm gonna follow rj's advice so next week i'm gonna watch it as if i'm watching a universal soldier series exactly yeah. uh, but yeah i'll still give it a six there's just a lot of like not seeing the trap i mean you have a covenant ship it's not just like a shuttle it's like an actual ship and you bought that that there's it's empty and everybody left and no yeah that's that's just well, too convenient for my comment yeah. there is i mean you're right but uh but it would have been more right if they would have been attacked or ambushed normally yeah but this one like with, what with the worms made it really like they didn't det- yeah. i'm sure they scanned it and stuff and yeah the worm things so, I mean, I give them a pass because, especially if they, they did never, everything, yeah, they never seen something like this and they got attacked with it. So it's okay. So for yeah. me, that was okay. That, that's that's true. Oh, and, and the thing is with the blessed one as well, or Mackie, she could have waited for the ship to take her to Earth <laughs> before attacking. That is true. But yeah, but yeah, again, it's just like a lot of those uh, MacGuffin errors that again, uh, a rational person would have scene or something like that maybe but she's again not, she's scared to be like a spy i mean she wouldn't want to be without her escort you know i, I don't know if she didn't want to could be but although a, although, although her uh, her plasma sword fingernail is cool yep i'd I like to have one of that as well <laughs> <laughs> that's a good kind of go like that i think like she ping punctured herself uh, it, she, know, the guy's hand was like oh okay okay oh, I was great. Like, that's yeah. right yeah. I like that effect too. Actually, I like oh, that effect. I, I was yeah. like, did she, did she do? Why did she puncture herself? Okay, it's a guy. So, so at least it 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 shows that there that she had some augmentation. A, yeah. So she's not purely human now. So it's, uh, at least there's some growth from the covenant thing. Yeah, yeah, and you know, and uh, what else? Yeah, uh, the the Quan and Soren arc. I'm confused with where is that going, but we'll see. Maybe next episode we'll show it. So I'll still give it a six. I think RJ went with the seven, Joe. Yeah. Oh, did. I went with the seven. RJ is a seven. I have a six. Yeah. What, did I, what did I score last time? Six. six. Went to a six. Um, okay. So, yeah. So some of my issues with it, uh, some of them have been the term like uh countered Nitpick. with you guys like oh made it it's not as bad as i thought so i still i'm still not i'm still very iffy with what john said this the silver team you know token daggers against each other so i'm not mm-hmm. happy with that i want them solid and loyal the chief and i'm still not happy that we're not getting master chief yet you know the badass yeah. you know he's still they keep saying he, they need him, they, he's the best, but we're not seeing that yet. So I'm mm-hmm. hopeful that we see that and that even more badass because without the emotions, you know, stuff like that, maybe it will have an effect, make him even better. So I'm still yeah. holding out hope, but I'm going to drop to a six from my last week, seven. I was oh, going to wow. say a five, but some of a suede, uh, um, a su- a shirt, uh, what, is it a suede? Uh, getting the term persuaded persuaded, persuaded. okay so you you, you manipulated 
you've rolled a little high on your persuasion, so uh, I'll bring, I'll stay, I'll go down to a six instead of a five. And I'll try as Arnie said. I'll try what RJ did with, with a different lens. I'm a I'm a six here. I was six last week. Uh, last week was a little lower six. It's a higher six again, just because not having Halo a lot in this episode made it better. But that's a one-time thing. They need to really get the yeah. best out of the Halo series and get the best out of this sci-fi series that they're trying to do to make it a little bit yeah. better. And you know, I know um, one of the trailers that we saw before was Star Trek, and Star Trek does so many amazing. Good. Uh, CG way better than this. So, um, and there's still yeah. Paramount Plus, but I know this is Star or Showtime that is producing it. So it might be like the production quality is not as good as uh, Paramount, but I hope it elevates a little bit more. This uh-huh. cannot continue. Like I, I you know, it, we're one third through the season already and it needs to go up. Now we're, we're, we're teetering in the middle, which is still good. We're progressing, but things need to go up so right that is our uh the uh, part one of our a block talking about episode three of halo up next we're gonna do episode two Ooh. of moon knight entitled someone the suit someone um, their soup uh before the i go soup. to the synopsis quick 30 second thoughts about the episode no spoilers to box oh i'm i'm loving i'm, I'm loving moon knight else needs to be said yeah. i'm really digging it uh, are you well it's good isn't it right you yeah, got a good bit you got a good bits and uh <laughs> but yeah i'm uh, loving it uh especially like uh i think i mentioned it before that i wish that this episode premiered right after the first episode last week it would have been a solid two two for like one two punch mm-hmm. and but but even separately it's a it's a good self-contained uh episode but yeah, uh, we'll talk more about that in the, in the synopsis. RJ. I like where the story is going. Um, I love the acting. The animation, not animation, um, the, the CG. What do you call it? The CG needs work. It got worse. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah same, same thing with... Uh, I think a combination of all three of your comments on my end, non-spoilery, mm-hmm. is uh, this series is extremely well cast, extremely mm-hmm. well acted. The pacing, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's weird. It's a different type of pacing uh, that we've seen, but both episodes have been extremely strong. But for this particular one, some in the suit, yeah, I... I uh, uh, I've listened to a lot of podcasts about their thoughts about the CG, and it isn't the best, too. Understandably, this is a TV show. This is not a mm-hmm. uh, this is not a movie. They don't have as much budget to do in two hours than they do in eight, right, or six. Yeah. Um, uh, they had some cinematography ideas that I don't know if landed or not, but in the end, the most important parts are shining. You have a great protagonists slash protagonists mm-hmm. you have a great supporting act and you have an amazing villain so oh yeah right so everything is yes, doing yes, well. yes. so uh let's go i'm gonna go through the synopsis um interrupt me at any point but i'm gonna try to be as uh like super super duper succinct but one we start off the episode with uh again usually um steven waking up we see the trailer uh, cut of him running, uh, you know, jumping out of bed, forgetting that he was tied up. He goes back to the um, to the uh, museum uh-huh. to check what had happened, and he realized that there's an investigation because uh, some vandalism has happened in the um, uh, in the bathroom. He then speaks with uh, the guard to check out the footage, warns them that oh, go ahead. <laughs> I, I like this conversation with the guys. Like, yep. it's gonna blow what your are mind. You yeah? doing your it's gonna right? blow your mind. <laughs> what, what are you right? doing, you donut? <laughs> yeah. So Scotty slash Steven um, tries to look at the footage to see if the jackal that he was fighting the episode prior was still there. But we soon realize it's invisible. So this was a good 
part yeah. of the episode where, all right, they're 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 really leaning into or providing, casting a doubt on the viewers, at least in the first part of the series, that like maybe everything is just in, uh, in Stephen and Mark's head. That maybe every, all of this is just imagination. So that's a cool part. They don't see a monster in the footage. It's just him cowering, crying, crying um, like a donut, destroying the bathroom. Uh, then he even, then gets even if even if it's obvious to us that it's real, it helps with Stephen because for him it it looks bad. Like he he does he can trust trust his mind as well. Exactly, and that's the that's the the it's we're progressing in terms of the DID stuff. There, mm -hmm. he knows he has some problems. He knows that it's it's you know prohibiting him to live a normal life. But this is kind of like now manifesting in like much more difficult ways because he thought that he was gonna get arrested, but luckily he was just fired from the museum. Oh, and so, Joe, I just like that shot where wait forward to the end, and then it comes yeah. out. Yeah, and then he looks at the me. camera and they say, that's, that's just you, me. mate. That's, that's not me. me. That's not me. And you could see from the face, like, it really, like, everything, the manners and the posture, yeah. it's like a different person. Again, Oscar, Oscar Isaac, stellar actor, anybody else would have struggled, but even with just luck. So progressing on, he decides to take, investigate a little bit further to um, find, uh, so the previous episode we saw, a razor phone and a storage unit key. He figured that if he finds where that key, what key that key opens, uh, he'll understand more what is happening with him and speak to the actual Mark Spector that he's been hearing about the past couple of episodes. He then finds a storage unit. It's a, it's essentially bigger than my apartment. God damn it! <laughs> it's a bunker. <laughs> he has a he has a lots of guns. He has a cot to sleep in. A couple of mirrors. More importantly, he sees a bag with Mark Spector's um, uh, passport. passport. Lots of money. Uh, and uh, finally, the fucking scarab that he was able to take out from the previous episode brings it back home. Who greets him back home? Stephen Grant is confronted by Layla. Layla was Spectre's wife. Uh, he, she doesn't seem to be aware of Stephen Grant's experience, but it kind of seems that this wasn't his, her first rodeo that he has disappeared before. Mm -hmm. So he, because he, he, she, she was still there despite what what has been happening. Um, they have a lot of discussions about you know their past, about their adventures, the the scarab itself. So Layla thought that she was. Um, uh, she was being divorced because he, he wanted to keep the scare by himself, uh, which is you're gonna we're gonna talk about a little bit more. She was actually uh, Stephen was tracked by a razor phone, which is I was thinking like razor phones doesn't have GPS, bro. So I don't know how you're gonna track that, but we'll see. I ingulation. <laughs> so it, it just shows that Layla is a badass, which she is. Yeah. Um, they are then arrested by police officers that work for Harrow. Um, uh, or at least Stephen is uh, arrested by police officers that are working for Harold. He we do the villain monologue when the police officers brings uh, Stephen to Harold's cult compound with everything. Everybody was happy. Everything was great. Was they a had pitch, great though. lentils. Good pitch. Good go pitch. I love this. I love this moment because this yeah. is one we 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 find out that Harold was. Conchu's former avatar, and he knows what Conchu is telling <laughs> Steven and or Mark, right? So yeah. it's like, is he telling you that you know he's the fist? I am the real justice. Uh, is he telling you that you know X Y Z? That's like that was so cool, and yeah. that's why I you know this one was like I really love this villain. No, yeah, it's so yeah. Cool. and the pitch, dude. Free food. Uh, everybody's learning three languages, teaching each other. No crime. Yeah. If you don't die, <laughs> yeah. But the idea is, uh, you know, and this is where the 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 heads butt because though Conchu is the fist of justice, he waits until the crime is done. So yep. I understand Amit slash Harrow's point. Like it's a little bit too late, but it's a little too late. But it's still it happened, so you can punish somebody. Well, Amit does the minority report thing where even if they haven't done anything bad, they'll yeah. kill it. And, you know, great argument by Stevens. Like, I would, don't want to kill a baby. Yeah. Do you want to kill a baby? 
eat donut. So yeah. um, lots of um, maybe of Thanos, art. right? Yeah, again, even Thanos was like random. So I think I'd rather that than kill a baby. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, uh, after that, uh, because Mark and uh, Harrow did not see eye to eye in terms of like you know getting the scarab or working together or reviving Amit, because that scarab is apparently the compass to Amit's tomb. They do some fight scenes. Um, uh, this is where. Uh, Cooley, while uh, 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 while Stephen is being run after by a summoned jackal, so where I- I'm gonna bring in RJ again, it's like, yeah, the summoning of the jackal was like, huh, the purple that seems one seems like a little CW. <laughs> like, kinda, no, awesome. it, it kind of reminds me reminds me of Scooby Doo. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Jay, back up a little bit for the camera. There we go. Yeah, that that's the thing. That's like the the summoning. Of, of the jackal and the jackal itself, I'm not particularly yeah. impressed. Uh, jackal running after Steven, pretty okay. I think they yeah. were trying to minimize how you see the jackal because they tried the, it was always oh, fast, it's invisible. Fast, fast. <laughs> yeah. Can, Plus, I, can... I, I like the, the, the purple magic that's kind of like the, the theme of all these MCU shows. Like, you know. Uh, the purple yeah, is purple. always the bad guy or something like that. Yeah, so it's getting confusing because like there's purple, there's red, there's yellow. So it's like it's, I, is I it did the like also tesseract? Oh, go go. No, go go ahead. I did like uh, that Layla was a badass. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, because yeah. Layla just showed up with the scarab and was gone from her. Uh, but this is the cool part. While uh, Stephen was being run after the jackal, jumps through a window or out of a window. Fails the superhero landing, but he, he was then uh, encouraged to summon a suit. Summon, summon the suit. a suit. And the then suit. a suit did summon no, wait, for so Steven. Before that, like uh, upon first viewing, I was annoyed with, with him here. Like, why does he keep fighting Mark? You know, it's a life or death situation. He can't do anything. And then, but it's. It's fixed later, so uh, but th- that's just my feeling at that point. Like, why are you always, you know, not giving into? You're gonna die. What do you want to die, or do you want to just? I know you might not like it, but you have to give, give over control to somebody who can. But then yeah. mm-hmm. it was a good acting scene, also where he was breaking down, and Layla was trying to like to man up him or something, and then he just he he just shut off instead of he instead of flipping on he shut off, and he just yeah. fell down to his knees. So that was good. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's great, but this is where we are introduced to the Mister Knight persona of Moon Knight, where it's not the cloak uh, and hood figure; <laughs> uh, it is literally a tuxedo suit with a white mask, which I actually I totally love. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I, I loved cool. it especially when he took off the coat. Oh, yeah. now and, he, and, and he when he rolled up his sleeves, that, he looked okay. good there, but he yeah. didn't move good though. <laughs> but he the the good. deranged so Colonel Sanders. <laughs> that's the yeah, thing that was, with, I love that line like not not psycho Colonel Sanders I, I love this fact because like you know even the people that have you know once Moon Knight came out and people google Moon Knight the Mr. Knight character is not this it's not right? yes. the Mr. Knight character is the detective the suave person and then Moon Knight is the the bronze whatever so this one is kind of like a totally different take on the character totally different take on 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 uh uh, what's his name? Conchu's power, where Conchu provides you with a suit that gives you superhuman strength and stuff. So they fight. Uh, uh, Mr. Knight persona fights the invisible jackal across the streets until he got really, really beat up. Uh, and then uh, along during that time, Mark continues to urge um, uh, uh, Stephen to give him control so that he can, you know, save him. And uh, at the end, when Layla was, you know, a little bit more in trouble, he finally relents, turns over the body to Stephen, and then proceeds Mark. to kind of like beat up the jackal, run after, wow. you know, trap him in a few uh, roofs, jump right. over a roof so that he can impale this jackal across this little nice statue but, in the middle of the square. I, I love that transformation though from the bus when he, looking, when he was yeah. running and then he turned down like that. That was a, a good shot. And then um, that's where all of the all of the commotion had, you know, either. Uh, uh, um, Stephen or Leila drop the scarab. Scarab eventually gets to uh, Harrow, and then they 
disappear. Um, so th the little bit before the end of the episode was uh, a conversation between Mark and Steven about who's in the, I'm going to call it in the, in the twilight zone, like who's ever in control. The person who's not in control usually is not conscious, but if you're conscious in the twilight zone, it feels like you're trapped. You can't move. It's a very, very difficult thing. Mark kind of mentions that you'll get used to it, just breathe through it. So it seems like it's been happening to him for a very, very long time. Being able to suffer through all of this, like being trapped it, while you watch somebody else live your life is so harrowing, but he's doing it because he is essentially also a conscious slave. The reason why he's conscious avatar is if he do, is not, Khonshu will use Leila as her as his avatar. So he's essentially like, ah, oh, you're, you're a hostage too in all of the situation. You're you're not necessarily an accomplished, but you're a hostage too. Yeah, but no, that's why he's staying as conscious avatar. But the reason right. you he was, I think he was almost dying. Oh so yeah, like Khonshu raised him from. He made a, he made a deal. We haven't yeah. seen that deal yet. Hopefully, in the next few. Uh, but we end an episode. Um, uh, Mark or Stephen or maybe some other somebody else wakes up in Egypt to continue to follow uh, uh, Harold who are, are trying to find Ahmed's student and resurrect them. So that is episode three. Um, yeah, episode um, two. So back to the mm -hmm. uh, um, the, 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 the talk with Mark and Stephen that's when made me realize why he, he didn't want to give it to him you know it's like first you know it's your life you know your body mm -hmm. and he's also angry at mark because every time he fucked up it was because of mark you know mm -hmm. the dates the the blackouts the you know absent absence and he's a murderer he's a mercenary he's a murderer yeah. and then finding out he's a murderer so that that made me okay i understand why he's always been fighting mark so that that kind of made it good so yeah uh, again, uh, that's the episode. Thoughts on the episode? Let's start with you, Arnie. Well, like I said, uh, this episode, um, along with episode one, if you combine them into like a two-hour premiere, it would have been a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, basically, episode one is Steven. Episode two is Mark. And then we, we see the, the motivations of uh, Harrow and even Mark and Konshu. And getting to see Layla as well is like, uh, you know, it's, it's a great bonus. So we know that she's also a badass. So it's not going to be a damsel mm -hmm. distress. Um, plus, I like that. I'm just going to go straight to the favorite scene. Like um, when he was running uh, running from Konshu and then he saw Konshu face to face. And they, they, they did a freeze frame. I thought Disney Plus uh, oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> was buffering. Like, wait, what, did they stop? Like, oh, oh, it's a freeze frame. They were trying so, to be cute. Yeah, so it was a funny uh, transition, and then, uh, and I did like that, you know, the conversation between uh, Harrow and Stephen uh, over soup, like, uh, you know, differing differing philosophies, and you know, maybe conscious the villain, maybe uh, uh, you know the the other goddess is the villain. So it's just a whole, and, and Marvel has been good at making the villains sympathetic like with Killmonger mm -hmm. and sometimes Thanos is right so you know it's a, it's a, one of those uh, following that tradition again so uh, you know uh, rating I'll give this episode a 9 out of 10 Ooh. Yeah. strong Ooh. strong go with you yeah. RJ um, I'm a little disappointed on the CG but the story is fantastic the villain is amazing I love the transformation. Unlike uh, Jong and Chewbacca, so I'm actually liking the Moon Knight costume more than Mr. Knight. Hmm. Um, I was actually annoyed at Steven for trying to bite off more than what he could chew um, at the cost of someone's life and the fact that he's actually, you know, he doesn't want to see anyone die, right? That's why hmm. he doesn't want to um, see like his mark. control of it. to mark yeah but with his irresponsible decision there could be more people who are That's true. Uh, who could actually be be killed 
And it's not because of your idealism that, that would, would protect the world. It's your action that could protect it. So I'm happy he tried, but you know, he's still far from Mark as Moon Knight. So um, I'm excited for the next episode. I think I will give this an eight for my rating. Mm. Two box. I want to check. What was my rating like? I think you said at eight. So, yeah, um, I liked, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, the CG in some spots were were not as good as you said, but it really didn't take me out of the story. I'm really glued on to because of you know Oscar. Yeah, like RJ also, I was annoyed a little bit with Steven, but you know, I I understand him by the end. Like every he his argument with Mark was really good at the end. Good acting, good scenes too. With when they flipped also in the mirror, and Mark yeah, just yeah. going crazy, showing that he's also you know, he's not as cool, calm, as collected as we as we thought, and and that she's do, he's doing it basically for Layla. So yeah, I'm good. I'm excited. I I, I can't wait to see where it goes from here. I'll give it an an eight still. I'm a the I'm a consistently a strong eight too. I think this is one of those series that if I rewatch back to back, like what Arnie has mentioned, if I watch the series back to back to back to back per episode, it'll mm. be even more fun because yeah. uh, you can you can really see the progression of the characters. Um, I I I love this episode much more than the last one. Uh, apart from the action, but more of like the, in, the the you can really see the inner turmoil not only between Mark and Stephen, but also between uh, Harrow, Amit, and Konshu. Like uh, the, mm -hmm. the the combating philosophies, which everybody wants to be. Everybody thinks that they're doing good, but nobody yeah. really thinks about the people that are being harmed. So that's kind of I like this idea, and one of the theories, and I'm stealing this from. Uh, emergency awesome is the reason why they haven't really released the the thor ragnarok um uh trailer trailer yet is because they want to really press give moon knight a little bit more leeway to show how gods do deserve to die because look at these two motherfuckers like, look at this <laughs> you, you, you know they just want to kill people right so regardless yeah. of whatever reason so it's I. It makes sense to me because I realize, like, oh, you get all this power, but you want to be a fist of vengeance. We always think that that's cool. That's what heroes do. But who who, who gets to judge, right? Yeah. And when do you get to judge? Too is another question. So I like that all of those pieces are in there, like seeds. But it's it's also portrayed like Oscar Isaac uh, acting against himself. Uh -huh. Amazing. I don't. I don't recognize the the the. I is it the the first the. I was just like I was. I rewatched the first few minutes again before we went on to record. But like him saying "bruv" in it, hey, bruv. donut. It's <laughs> like it. I know that doesn't sound perfect, but I believe him. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? I believe him. So it's like that's even better acting than yeah. actually being able to do a perfect accent. So this is a solid eight for me. I can't wait for next week. Uh, and that's it for our A Block for Halo and Moon Knight, our television series. Now, for the coup de grace. Well, we'll from over Egypt to, to handsome Egypt. Man, handsome man himself to talk about the synopsis of Death on the Nile and my ex-girlfriend, Gal Gadot. Uh, Egyptian-related sh uh, shows and movies. There huh? you go. Uh, there's a thing. Exactly. It kind of it kind of fits, right? Yeah. So this was released in February 11, 2022. Um, box office gross uh, 45.4 million dollars. Run time for two hours and seven minutes. Um, yeah. But you know, I enjoyed this two hours seven minutes. Yeah. Now, quick synopsis, or at least please jump in. Or do we do we make um. Do we do our comments first? No, let's do the synopsis this time. We can, we'll discuss it point by point. All right. So welcome to Death on the Nile. Movie starts with a young Poirot, Poirot. as a soldier in World War One. Is it? How do you pronounce it? Poirot. 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 Poirot.
he demonstrates his being resourcefulness as a soldier um, and intelligence by observing the movement of the birds to determine the wind direction. It's actually a very well made de aging of uh, Brana uh, mm-hmm. as he tells the story of the well, it was black and origin. White, so it made it easier. Yeah, true. That's right. That's right. But it tells you, it gives you the idea of the signature mustache of Brana. <laughs> so. Moving on to 1937, London, we see Poirot as a, as a celebrity, almost you know, treated as a celebrity for achieving a status, entering a club where Salome Otterborn is performing on stage. Um, her niece is Rosalie Otterborn, who also plays as her strong-willed uh, manager, getting their money paid up front. But Poirot by, notices... Um, the teacher, right? Shuri? Shuri, yep. yeah. Letitia Wright. Letitia Wright. That's correct. That's correct. And Sophie, uh, Salome is played, played by Sophie Oconedo. All right. So, but you see, Paro is noticing something more than just amazing jazz, bluesy music, as you would call it. He notices, he sees a handsome man, Simon Doyle, with a very beautiful Jacqueline de Belfort. Mm. So Simon mm. from is sex played education. by Army Hammer and Jacqueline de or Jackie de Belfort. It's Emma Mackey. Very pretty. Very pretty girl. Yeah, she's she's been uh she she's been uh what's this term? Emma people, Mackey. Pe- I, I, people mis mistake her for Margot Robbie. I thought it was Margot Robbie to start. Very good Margot And Margot Robbie, Robbie also gets oh. mistaken for, for her know. sometimes. But I'm sure it's more for, for she, Mackie. She portrayed a really good crazy ex-girlfriend, so I love it. Mm. <laughs> and they were, they were dancing in a very, very suggestive very and hot, erotic right? manner. Very hot. So after that show was being done, you have... Uh, come entering Miss uh, Lynette Ridgeway, played by John's ex girlfriend Gal Gadot, there in a you go. stunning silver Chris. gown and a coat. Beautiful. Um, it's like time stop as she entered. Now she proceeds to meet with Jackie, um, as apparently they were childhood friends. Best friends. Um, best BFFs. friends, right? <laughs> and she introduces her fiance to her. Simon. Bad move. <laughs> <laughs> Bad move. But in, in the though? effort, in the effort of having him uh, be the contractor for her upcoming estate, so, you know, trying to help out a friend, noticing that he's actually don't handsome. Let... Yeah, don't it's okay to introduce, but you don't say. Know. Why don't you take her to the dance floor? And Gal Gadot was raised up her leg literally wrapped around her or maybe just a regular dance not that kind of dance exactly i think but i guess that's that's the main lesson here is like all right um do not introduce your uh girlfriend and or boyfriend to your most attractive friend the end (laughs) good story so joe but you uh, also introduce you to my friend Just kidding. <laughs> All right. So we see Jackie tearing up because she, she's starting to feel uncomfortable. What the heck? Why are they dancing like that? Right? So anyway, next scene, we find Perot enjoying an espresso and a Jaffa cake, uh, looking at the Sphinx, or at least one of the one of the. I think it is the Sphinx, right? Yeah, I think so, it's the Sphinx. Yeah. Hmm. He later on gets annoyed by a by a man tra- flying a kite, Pyramid. ruining his book. Huh? Yes. Yeah, pyramid, uh, yeah. Well, on a pyramid, but you know, someone flying a kite, um, and and he realizes that, that this is friend book book. Now, with the with the insistence of book, he also gets to meet book's wealthy painter mother Euphemia, who was painting. The, the pyramid. Paro gets invited to a dinner, which apparently happens to be the honeymoon of the newly married Mr. and Mrs. Doyle, but not the Mr. and Mrs. Doyle that we expected, <gasps> which is Jackie and Simon. Surprising! <laughs> it ended JJ. up to be. 
Yes. So at first, this one, I was, I was annoyed. Like he met Bok by accident in the pyramid. That's kind of like out of nowhere. One of a million shot, but then they rectify it at mm-hmm. the end. But still, yeah, at, yeah. at this point, it was like, really, he met, he meets his friend that he met. That, oh, that that he was with in the first movie by accident in the pyramid, like okay, that's it. Yeah, that's that no, actually, that's true. That that does kind of resonate with me, and I'm like, yeah, how did that happen? But he, um, Pyro always said that he's not on a case. He is uh, on vacation. Just so happens to all of this unfold. And the mama, so uh, very hostile against Pyro. Oh yeah. yeah. Right, it's like un- unnecessarily hostile. Unnecessary, yes. The festivities were going well until they see Jack showing up in a hot red dress, which ruins the mood of the party. Um, what's her name? Lynette uh, gets upset, and and I guess that's the end of the festivities at that time. <laughs> the couple approaches Paro, asking for his help to stop Jackie from following them because. Apparently, wherever they go, she shows up. Yeah, because and you just, fucking stole the damn fiance. I'll fucking make your life a living hell too. Uh, uh, viewers, the, take note. <laughs> you're a hotter, richer version of you. Why? I, I, I mean, I was when I was watching at this point, I was, I, I was, I was gonna say Emma or like Jackie. Uh, Gal is way richer way hotter you should just say like, like yeah sounds about right if that happened to me i was like yeah good luck guys no Thank but they much. were in love and as Paro actually approached jackie she t- she shares that story with him you know that you know i'm sure he still loves me that a little bit of a psycho ex-girlfriend kind of mine that's why i thought right? it was a bit of a harley quinn-ish yeah and, and even and even shows um, little uh, toy, you know, of a yeah. of a twenty two caliber handgun, a mm-hmm. double double that can carry two bullets, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and she explains, like, you know, even though with a, it just looks like a toy, but one bullet, how one bullet can stop a heartache. So Paro advises the couple, you know what? You guys are happy. You have a beautiful home. I'm sure. Why don't you guys just go home? But somehow, and, and I get annoyed at this point, mm. Simon decides, Simon, the man with no money, decides, no, you know, the show should still freaking go on. Hijack everyone, planning to take them all on a cruise on the Nile, even having um, Lynette dress up as Cleopatra. Oh, so hot. As, as so that, that was hot. That was hot. <laughs> I was. I don't like costumes. You know, I I like my women in a sundress. That's it, or t-shirts and sweats. But when Gal Gadot was like in that giant gown with a headdress, like, ooh, let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Which apparently has a, um, you know, it, it goes back to what Jackie said. That she was. She met Lynette in her school play. She was supposed to play, um, Jackie was supposed to play the role of Cleopatra. But when, when Lynette came, she was eventually uh, moved to the assistant of Cleopatra and Cleopatra was given, the role was given to uh, Lynette or Gal Gadot. Well, fair enough. She's actually beautiful as well. So um, they all go to a, to a beautiful wooden boat uh, that takes them to the SS Karnak. So the other participants in this entire movie. So there's Lynette's lawyer slash cousin, which sounds like Chovax's wife's name, because um, his name is Kachardian. Kachardian. Uh, <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Andrew Kachardian. Um, her ex fiance, who's a doctor, um, what's his name? Russell, uh, Russell Brand. Brand. <laughs> know, Russell, no, 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 Doctor Doctor Besner. Doctor Doctor Besner, right? Okay, yeah. Russell, played by Russell Brand, which was very, very well casted, actually. Um, her personal maid, 
Um, you name... know nothing, Jon Snow. Yeah. Wildling. I call her Rose. Uh, Louise. Louise. Yeah, Lu- Rose Leslie. Louise Bourget. He's very thin. And I love man. that. The wild. She's very thin. Actually, very, very thin. Her godmother and with her traveling nurse. Mm. The author borns, uh, the performers, were also invited to celebrate since they were invited to to celebrate the nuke chill since it was their it was that night where they were performing that was the night that they met so it they made it made sense that they invited them to suspiciously the lawyer cousin seemed to rushly want Lynette to sign some contracts and had even tried to have her sign without her you know don't read it it's boring even Simon seems thing. to be in on something yeah. Always great when your lawyer says, don't read it. I know, right? Fantastic. Right? But I think she was really, she was also supported by uh, Re- Rebecca, was it? Rosalie. Rosalie, Rosalie. Rosalie Otterborn, where she was like saying like, you know. You're the one that taught me. Yes. Not just to take whatever. So that pauses that. So I, there's already a suspect in mind. Um, they had their first stop in Abu Simbel, where they explored the 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 I guess um, the cave. Not what do you call that place? They explored the site, yeah. and you have Mister and Missus Doyle wanting to get frolicky and freaky, oh. and then in an well, if your wife was that was a good, I guess. A good scene. Uh, yeah, so he takes her on a ledge. Dude, yeah. talk about extreme sex. So take take them on a ledge between the stone statues, the the until you know, as they were starting to get it on, a boulder from the top drops. Um, so they start to get worried. So they decide, you know what, let's just go back. Uh, sandstorm came came in. So after that, they they went back to the SS Karnak, and only to find an uninvited guest who keeps showing up, the jilted. None other than the jilted Jackie um, stalking the newlyweds. So the uh, Doyle's I, decide- She mentioned that she was uh, tracking them via the razor phone. <laughs> <laughs> so the Doyle decided, you know, you know what? Um, it's just, you know, this is tiring. Let's, let's finish this. Let's just finish the trip. Lynette uh, goes to Jackie and wishes her well. In a way that the best friend does, Jackie starts to cry. She tells Simon, you know what? I'm going to go to bed. I'll take some sleeping pills, you know. Um, and Simon rubs all the sex they've been having, the ha- how happy he is with, with Lynette. How, and he's actually almost, bored, he's really borderline. No, he was really rude toward Jackie to the point that she lost her mind, pulls out her gun, and shoot Simon in the knee. So, Book and Rosalie was actually on site, and they stopped Jackie. Uh, so they grab Jackie. Her gun drops. Rosalie kicks the gun under the furniture. Um, well, that's happening. Book calls the doctor and the nurse. So the doctor was tending to Simon while the nurse was calming Jackie with opiates. Next day, the maid, uh, Bourget, uh, Bour- Bourget, uh, Louise, Louise, Louise <laughs> brings uh, breakfast only to find Lynette dead with a shot on her temple. Conveniently, Poirot is on board, and waha, here comes. So, uh, how did you guys <laughs> feel about this? Like the murder being like halfway through the movie. It's like uh, I kind of expected that because that's that's what the last movie was. I just thought that it was going to be somebody else, not Gal Gadot. Yeah, yeah, um, I didn't expect Gal Gadot. The, the first movie, even the murder was in the first third, not not like oh. almost halfway. Like, like this one me, is I, literally halfway. Oh, it's getting like longer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think the I, mo- the movie the, the movie started chugging along once the murder happened because the the whole setup was a little bit slow i mean i guess they're establishing the characters but once yeah the, i think um, they needed yeah. to spend a little bit more time to to show one yeah 
Gal Gadot stole uh, uh, Jackie's fiance, and then Jackie is crazy and wily. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're right. I, yeah, I didn't. I thought that maybe it would have been nicer if it was a little bit sooner. But you yeah. want to maximize Gal Gadot in that movie. No, but for oh, me, yeah, it was both killer off so early. It's also for me. It was refreshing because I was. I kept expecting the murder to happen soon. It's like oh. I mean, you know, we got to know everybody before it happened. And there's know? there's the Hercule Perot uh, uh, origin story too, which mm. I forgot to comment about. That fucking face was destroyed. I know. And How did it look like? You cover it with the mustache, and then you don't even see. I don't see any scars. Scars. One of cheeks, right? They wanted to overemphasize why Hercule Perot will have like a giant mustache. mustache, which I appreciate. But again, I know. Yep. But Arnie, did you see the first one? I didn't see the first one, oh, okay. uh, but I'm familiar it. with uh, Poirot and uh, Agatha Christie, so you know it, it was good. The first one was yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. You go in, Jay. All right, all right. So um, it's just so convenient that Poirot was on board, and then he proceeds to investigate on the death of Lynette uh, Doyle. Um, there you go. You have death on the Nile. So later, the and they also found, sorry, I forgot to mention, during her wedding, she wore this gorgeous Tiffany necklace mm-hmm. with a very gigantic opus or something. So it was orange. Or I think it was a topaz or something, but nonetheless, beautiful. So they found that the necklace was missing. So, you know, murder with a missing necklace, there's definitely something here. So Perot starts to question each passenger to the point of pissing everyone off. And he gets to learn more about each person's history, their anger, their reverence towards the heiress, and, and their dirty intertwining relationship. And uh, uh, since this is the second murder with, uh, with Book, I love how Book. their Book is like his assistant. Like, assistant. Uh, like a just, Watson. He just um, accused me of murder. Well, to be honest, he does that a lot. I know it's a shortcoming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I like their. I always like. I always love book. Yeah, All right. On. So, Paro assisted. This is going to be a little bit faster. Paro assisted by Simon and Book interrogates the guests, who each you'll find out bears a grudge against Lynette or her family. So to sum it up. Louise, the maid, um, was to leave Lynette's employment to be married, but Lynette ended the engagement. How? By offering her yep. fiancé a big amount of money to, to pay off all his debts if he leaves Louise. And so good and bad the guy thing. Take? One, at least you figured out that the, that the fiancé of, of, of Bouget was a not as in love with her, but also secondarily. God damn, bro. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Wendell Sham was engaged to Lynette until she left him for Simon. So doctor was obviously um, very much uh, upset. Who invites and their ex I know, to their right? fucking engagement crew? fiance not just boyfriend. Yeah, and, and it's just like ex fiance just a few weeks before she met Simon. <laughs> so that definitely puts motive. Andrew, uh, Kat Chaudian, uh, <laughs> was also learned to be embezzling from Lynette. Uh, Bowers, formerly wealthy family, which is the nurse, was ruined by Lynette's father during the Great Depression. Um, because that's what um, her family does. They get richer by making the other rich people poor. Mm-hmm. Then you'll have Van Schuyler, who is the godmother, the beneficiary of Lynette's will. So she and Bowers are actually lovers. So there's another motive there. Nurse and lover. I'd like that. All right. Take care of my well, sniffles. It's also bangy. <laughs> That's true. Um, and then you have Salome, who uh, was actually a target of Lynette's racist remarks years ago. And you'll see that 
Euphemia, which is the mom of book, uh, finds Lynette's necklace. Poirot suspects she resented Lynette for introducing book, her son, book. to Rosalie. To Rosalie. Whew, so you see, that's kind of like a whole lot of shit that people have for one another, and they're all housed in one boat. Hmm. Amazing. It seems Now, like it's a Hercule Poirot movie. It all does a seem coincidence. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the main suspect is Jackie, um, which obviously because she showed it, right? But she was closely monitored by Bowers all night. So she has an alibi. Her gun eventually was dredged from the Nile because it went missing. No one knew where the gun was. Um, but later it was dredged from the Nile. So they kept searching, hook, uh, trying to net and, and hook things around the boat. Um, they find the gun wrapped in Van Schoeler's missing scarf with a bloody handkerchief as well. So they were thinking it was wrapped before it was... Uh, they shot her just to just to um or it, the gun was wrapped in a handkerchief shot and then um to dampen the noise and then uh, thrown in with a missing scar but then later on and in a very confrontational manner paro reveals that euphemia hired him to investigate rosalie so book's mom that's and that's where it ties up The whole time he was there, not because this he was what, This made it really good. Exactly. It because removed all the coincidences. Hired him <laughs> to investigate Rosalie. So he concludes that she is actually more than worthy for her son's affection. Uh, Rosalie gets angry, obviously, at being investigated. Who would it be? He storms off. And they, yeah. No, this is where, there's this part where, like, During the investigation, everybody's attacking Pharaoh for being uh, uh, like inhuman, like cold, calculating. Yeah, being you know. a dick. And <laughs> if I was him, like, did I say I was not? Like, <laughs> did, did I say anything no. to the contrary? I'm, I'm like this. I know I'm like this. You know, why are you all upset that I'm like this? <laughs> like, And you guys already know that I am like this because he's know, like, quite strange. For being a dick. <laughs> And even Book said that, oh, I, I know what it's like to be on that side. <laughs> so anyway, um, she storms off. He tries to apologize for offending Rosalie. Uh, they find Luis's body. Somehow mm-hmm. keeps pivoting. I, I don't know what you call that part of the ship, but her body goes Water around. I don't around. know, yeah. I guess something like it, right? Um... Her throat has been slit. She has some money kept in her. They so keep Poirot's healing their hot ones. My gosh. Mm-hmm. No, right? I know. So Poirot suspects that she witnessed um, Lynette's murder and blackmailed the killer. So he sees a possible witness outline in a blood splatter. So he even goes to the wall, sees the blood splatter, and then kind of measures it. Um, where was it? Interrogating Book and Simon, Poirot deduces that Book found Lynette dead and stole her necklace to gain financial freedom from his mother. God damn Because Book. his mother wouldn't want to give God her, damn know? Book. But panicked and put it in Euphemia's belongings. Book witnessed Louise's murder, but before he can reveal the killer, um, shot dead. Poirot um, chases the killer. This is when uh, I have to take a point from the movie. I love Book. So his death and his stealing the thing. Was minus one so point. Bad. Minus one point. Yeah. And come on, well, he, he knows. He knows Poirot is in the in the boat. I was I was gonna say Why? everybody will that? know that Poirot will figure that out. I mean, not even everybody. No, but I guess him. he knows really... how good Poirot is, especially from the first movie. So he's seen him in action, not just from you know from deeds or from rumors. Mm. So yeah, go go go. All right. So um, yeah, which is really a sad, sad death that that, that happened to the throat. Um, but I guess that's what that's what um, Poirot would say. Hercule 
would say, you know, love will make you do things, right? So it, mm. it's strong enough. To Sounds make you familiar, do Will Smith. What, was, was it the 22 that hit book? Or to, I think it was a 45, right? It's it was a 45. 45. 45, 45, yeah. 45. Like and the one holding the 45 was actually. Um, <laughs> Andrew. Andrew. So Poirot chases the killer but only finds the abandoned gun. Locking the surviving guests in the boat's bar, Poirot kind of pulls the strings together, reveals, makes the big reveal. Yeah, I love how yeah. he was pissed here. And like in the trailers, I was like, I saw that part where he was walking in with the gun. It's like, why would he be so emotional? And now we know yeah. why. <laughs> There's a book. There's a book. Book. Exactly. Start shooting them, getting everyone's attention, and says, "I'm gonna t- I'll tell you guys on on who's the killer." So he starts sharing everyone's sins, from Andrew's um, uh, stealing money, yeah. embezzlement, exactly, to um, uh, how how. Um, book was only trying to have financial freedom <laughs> and then eventually this, revealing this was, my only issue with all of these is the one with Andrew like uh, that was like a red herring the yeah. the boulder like very very out yeah. there like he yeah, and he, he did he didn't explain it well too he's like I just mm. saw them and he just pushed it it's like alright cool huh? and then he does the thing where I didn't mean to kill her. I would never kill her. Um, dude, it's like the typical, you know, the the celebrities yeah. and athletes where they say, no disrespect, but and then you say something disrespectful. The first comment yeah. does not fix the second. I didn't mean, to, dude, you push the boulder, try to kill them. You just did it. You yeah, I think God, it missed. You know, I didn't really want to kill her. Really. I loved her. And I would sure. never kill her. <laughs> he has that line, I would never kill her. You just missed, asshole. Oh, fuck her. <laughs> but then Paro eventually reveals, okay, it makes the big reveal that Simon killed Lynette. And this was all masterminded by Jackie. They are still actually still lovers and arrange Simon's romance to Lynette to inherit her wealth. Jackie then drugged Poirot's uh, champagne and pretended to shoot Simon with a blank. The, the fake injury was caused by the missing red paint. Red paint. So I knew already, I was like, okay, something's going to be up. Why, why did she have to mention her red paint was missing? But anyway, so it was stolen from Euphemia. While Jackie distracted Book and Rosalie, Simon killed Lynette and then shot his own leg, muffled by Van Schuller's uh, scarf. Yeah. Jackie killed Louise with Windlesham's scalpel and book with Andrew's gun. Faced with the proof of Simon's paint-stained handkerchief, Jackie, knowing that there's no escape, embraces Simon, kisses him, and shoots him through the back, killing both of them. Two birds with one bullet. I and have an issue course, with that, dude. I'm not that great with... I mean, I've touched, played with guns, but would the 22 pass through that body and hit nope. somebody? Nope. I don't think so. No, no, no. no. It's gonna be it's gonna be lodged in Simon's flesh. No, I don't thought. think it's strong. 20, yeah. But if it were a forty-five, yes. Yeah, yeah. Forty-five, yes. At, at, at close range. I mean, twenty-two would yeah. kill. Would kill, but I don't know how the the penetration yeah. about. The bullet of a twenty-two is just about this big. It's like a yeah. bird killing. You know, it's what yeah, bird yeah. Hunters. I mean, the the ribs alone will block the bullet mm. from passing through. Yeah, and especially if it issue. went through the spine as well. Then yeah, just hitting the spine would increase yeah. a lot of power. Yeah, plus exactly. even even if it went through, it'll probably just bruise her or something like that. I know. <laughs> it would have been <laughs> more, more realistic if he shot her than she shot herself. Yeah, I, that was, that I was hoping been, that, that would have been better. Case. Yeah. yeah, but and nonetheless, more dramatic. For, for you know, dramatic. It's it's and more like theatrical. You know, and her her last with her dying breath. I love you. <laughs> I love you, Mr. J. <laughs> So let's I stop know, here. Right? Let's let's go around what with the uh, each other's. Uh, no, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll just finish. I'll finish the last part. Uh, or or no no. Let's just stop here first. Let's, I want to see like what's our reactions with the with our guesses and 
about uh, the the reveal of the killer. Who did you think? What did you think about? Yeah, let's the start with a favorite the... soft your your favorite suspect, and then if it aligned with the uh, the actual story. So you you start, Arnie. Well, I've seen too many true crime podcasts and Dateline NBCs. It's always the spouse. <laughs> so, because he stands to benefit the most in terms of inheriting the money. Uh, plus, uh, the, the twist that I got was the, that Jackie was involved. But looking back, it made sense that they basically manipulated uh, Lynette into marrying Simon and then premeditated murder all around. Yeah. So did you like the, the reveal that it was? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean it, it would have been more disappointing if it was like the godmother or the maid, you know, because like uh, the, the motives didn't fall too much, right? Gotcha. So, yeah. And then book yeah, you know, he stole, but yeah, it's not gonna be. so the only logical was, yeah, like the the way that she died, like you know, she, she was sleeping, so it, it needed some opportunity. So it's like what Poirot said, it's a, there's a it's premeditated, it was planned. Whereas the others were like more clumsy murders and all that stuff. So yeah. Hey, I, uh, oh okay, John go. Go, John. go, go, go. John. John. I I Here's the thing. When I was watching this movie, I immediately knew who the killer was. As soon as um, both Gal Gadot and Army Hammer told uh, told Hercule Poirot that she always, that Jackie always shows up wherever they go, mm. even mm -hmm. if it's secret or even if it's whatever. And then I knew you cut that down to either. Gal Gadot, Army Hammer, or the Wildling, uh, right? Those, sorry, those are the names that I remember. Louis, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Louis. So Louis. I always thought like, and then when Gal Gadot died, I immediately thought, oh, it's definitely Army Hammer. And then corroborated with the fact when he got shot, we don't see him get shot, right? Yeah. He yes. just goes like, ow, and then like, yeah. and that was it. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck. So at the rest of the movie, I was just in it for the ride to find the motives and I actually much more enjoyed her Cooper of finding out everybody else's secrets than the fucking suspect. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Same. I actually already guessed Simon and Jackie had something in, in cahoots because how would Jackie follow if it weren't from for Simon telling her where? Yeah. I mean, coincidentally, was she that good? She wasn't so rich. Yeah. I don't think she's poor, but I don't think she's that rich to to have so much knowledge of where they go. She'll jo join the ship, you know. Yeah, I, I kind of expected that. And when I saw the the gunshot to the knee, and I was like thinking, "Oh, that's where the red paint went." So I was already, I kind of already knew at that point, mm -hmm. uh, at that part. But I just wanted to see how her cue would uh, would uh, would piece things together. Gotcha. But it's a great movie. Should we? Yeah, so for me, um, yeah, it's always the spouse, of course. But uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, with Jackie, it was a little surprise to me, like Arnie. Um, I yeah. thought it may be like the husband and maybe the Katwijan. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, yeah, I did like it because there, there, there were some red herrings as well. Like uh, um, I didn't think of Jackie because she never cared about money. Mm -hmm. So, but then I didn't think about that. You know, she would do it for him, but yeah, I I, I did like that too. So that was good. So yeah, I just really sad about book. I yeah, know it sucks though. Well, as the passengers disembark, Poirot is unable to voice his feelings to Salome, and you'll see after a few months later, a clean-shaven Poirot comes down, visits her club, and watch her rehearse alone in the dark. So there's, you know, maybe Paro is gonna get a second chance in life. Let's Aww. see. They they have green lit, green, uh, green lighted the a third one. The third. A third one. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I mean. And I that's mean. it. What that do you guys? Is what's your rating? Let's go around your your rating, your movie MVP and favorite moment. I'll start with. Let's start with Yarny. I'll rate it a uh, standard eight. 
uh, uh, MVP. I always liked Rose Leslie, especially uh, uh, when <laughs> you know nothing, Jon Snow. But uh, uh, I think the real MVP. Hmm. Well, it probably roll, but I think it's the 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 jazz singer, uh, Sal Salome. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, because because when uh, when Jackie and Simon were trying to escape, she even pulled her own gun to keep him <laughs> there. So that was like, oh, darling, you're not leaving this boat or something. Like that. So, love the I love the attitude. Yeah, that that, uh, that that was significant because uh, one versus one, I can make a yeah. take a chance. But if it's two versus yeah. one, then I, I'm fucked. Yeah. So, so that was a good MVP, like, uh, like clutch, <laughs> clutch move. Trebax, how about you? So, I'm gonna score this. Uh, supposed to be an eight, but it goes down to a seven because they killed Book. I love yeah. Book. <laughs> I, I, I'm just just for reference, I would I would have scored the first one a nine. So this one is. Is an eight, Lower. so it was good too. I mean, I I like that. Um, it's not your typical murder mystery. Uh, well, not from what I've seen. I mean, I know it's pretty typical in the books or something, but yeah. from watching, like, uh, the murder was halfway through the movie. Uh, Perro was in the middle of it. You know, like he he didn't come in yeah. after the fact. He was bound by it. Uh, I like how there was intertwining stories that brought it made it better. You know, like if like meeting book by accident, that would have been if that was just left hanging there, that would have been a big like what the fuck. And I like how they, what was that? But they tied it well. Yeah, they tied it well. Um, and uh, yeah, like I always enjoy the you know the what the the finding out all the secrets and uh, everybody's thing and. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. I there was too many scenic scenic shots for me. I, mm -hmm. They kept. I guess it was to, I like that. <laughs> to show the the setting, the like the changing in the settings. There were just too many. But uh, how many shots of the river now? Can you? Show? But yeah, so that's it for me. Seven. It's supposed to be an eight, but I'll drop to seven because of they killed Boo. Uh, I'll go so we can close it out, Jay. Okay. I am. Uh... It's a, it's I'm I'm a a low no I'm gonna go six here, um because okay. I'm a the the first one was way better, the first one was way more engaging the first one was not as predictable oh, as spoil this it one though, uh, for for them oh yeah oh yeah yeah uh, it's it's, uh, it's a little bit it's, but that's less predict this one was super predictable for me, um and you know. I don't. I'm not smart enough to kind of like twist the uh, do additional twist to make the movie a little bit more interesting. But it's still a very enjoyable movie because the cast was great, and I'm you know my my favorite character here, of course, is a uh, you know I like book because I love the idea of like you have this kind of comedic person that is um, reinforcing how awesome Puro is. Um, but the the biggest surprise for me this movie is this is the first movie that I've seen Gal Gadot actually act. <laughs> like she was actually like she she could be a bitch, she could be sexy, she could be like yeah. you know a damsel all in one movie, which is great because I I love the Wonder Woman movies, but she was a horrible actress in both of those. This one she actually is like oh man that's that's not Gal Gadot anymore, hmm. that's Lynette. And it's cool, and I really like that. But again, uh, this is a, a murder mystery, and I can't give you a high score if I predicted the entire thing like in the first eighteen minutes of the movie, right? So, uh, but it's still good, and I I hope that they keep on making these because I love these types of it's movies fun, yeah. where uh, all star cast, cool scenes. I again, you know, I hate period pieces, but this period pieces is not necessarily because of the, the period, the, you know. It, you know, the period doesn't is not done so that you can't have fingerprint or DNA stuff. No, it's not about that. The, the period is done in a way that you the it's just very picturesque and we're transported in these places that we'll never go to. So I really, really like the series. I'm glad that there's going to be another one. 
Jay, how about oh, you? Jay, before you do that, oh, for me, wait. I forgot my my uh, movie MVP. Um, I always knew that uh, Gal was gonna be uh, breathtaking, so I was surprised how beautiful I found uh, um, Jacqueline. Jackie. Jackie, yeah, yeah Jackie. Harley, so Harley he's Quinn. my okay. MVP. Uh, yeah, favorite moment was the ending, the pearl. <laughs> Yeah, in the jazz club. No, no, no. The I mean the I know who killed their scene. Yeah, <laughs> always well done. So Jay, bring us home. What did you think? I'll first I'll rate it a seven because same and wrong. I was able to guess already. Somehow I knew it was already Simon who killed his wife, and my movie MVP is Simon. Surprisingly, oh. because he got the screw too hot. <laughs> wow. Both of them, both of them. You're right. Holy so shit. He deserves to be the MVP. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, guys. Should, <laughs> should, should have gone after the maid too, huh? <laughs> you never know. Maybe he did. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Maybe he did. It would have been a trifecta. Maybe he did. I know, right? So, right. Um, favorite, favorite, um, well, the whole movie was actually nice. I would recommend this movie to watch it with your friends or even with your family. It's light. It's not something that will keep you in the dark for long. Yeah. It, it's not partially gruesome. predictable. Yeah. yeah, not gruesome. Yeah. A bit sexy, but you know, maybe not watch the kids. But I mean, it's everyone te- else, it, but, yeah. it's teasing, sexy. It's not. It's not yeah. full on uh, scandalous. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, but still, because we were able to guess, um, we were able to guess the murder earlier on, kind of removed the fun for me. Um, I do hope they make a movie for Paro itself. I mean, that love story with him and his uh, lost love would have been a great, um, would have been a great uh, story as well. Okay, that's All it. Right. Uh, again, that is our episode 30 of Plus 6 3 HP Reviews. Thank you very much for joining us. Programming reminders, we're taking a little break next week. I'm going on vacation. We've done this a couple of weeks, right? So we'll do a little bit of reset. When we get back in two weeks, we will be discussing the backlog episodes of Moon Knight and Halo. So that's Moon Knight episodes 3 and 4, Halo's episodes 4 and 5. So watch it. Come along, come back, and react with us. Comment. Let's discuss all the things that uh, you know we have. We uh, will be watching. If you have movies that you want us to uh, uh, review, I review actually do. Movies? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, Moonfall is out. Do you want? I saw know? Moonfall. Yeah. You've seen it already. I, I love you. I love you all so much. So no. Okay. Do yes. not watch this. I've movie. seen it. Also, is it? Yeah. I but, also love you. Okay, all right then. No. In that case, two out of the four already seen it. So now you're gonna join us in the pain. Everybody, watch Moonfall. Is we'll do we'll do a quick review of Moonfall after our backlog episodes of this Netflix, Amazon. Yes, Netflix. Is it on Netflix? Uh, Moonfall. Uh, Netflix, but Amazon. No, uh, it's uh, on demand. On demand. On demand. So Amazon. Oh, 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 oh Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, thank you very much. Last goodbyes. Let's start with our special guest for chair, Ar- Arnie. Later, Gators. Later, Skaters. Uh, Chewbox. Yeah. That's good night. RJ. Calling it a day. See you guys. We love you. We thank you for review, and we hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>